My name is Sharon Hobenschild. Uh, my traditional name is Aoli, and I come from the House of Mali, which is um, the Gitsan First Nations in northern British Columbia. And um, on that's on my mother's side, and on my father's side, I have European ancestry. And I work here at VIU, Vancouver Island University, as the Director of Aboriginal Education and Engagement. And I've been here for 13 years. We're an office, we're a department, Office of Aboriginal um, Education and Engagement, and um, we work, um, I kind of best, you know, have over the years best kind of found the, the way to describe the work that we do is we're kind of a interface and a resource between um, communities, Indigenous communities, and the institution. And so if Indigenous communities are looking to um, develop a certain program or want some uh, delivery of a program in their community or they have concerns about students or, or questions about you know um, student th their students coming to VIU we can be we can be that kind of po um, point place where they come in and, and um, engage and um, and sometimes that leads to a conversation that then leads to um, a development of a proposal and a program and then we then we would kind of involve different faculty um, and resources within VAU as we go. Uh, and then the opposite of that is internally, if um, someone within the Vancouver Island University is interested in you know, enhancing their um, course or their program or has questions about um, protocols or um, anything kind of related to Indigenous history or Indigenous knowledge, again, we can be a resource to faculty and admin, senior admin, um, students, um, yeah, and a lot of through that over the years, um, the, we've we've applied for a lot of grants, and um, we run a lot of programs through um, Project Lead, a lot of different programs to support Indigenous students specifically with kind of access, retention, and completion. You kind of have to look at it kind of from the micro ways to the to the more macro. So the micro ways, I think, is. You know that students, seeing students um, persist or first find their find 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 their way here, um, or here and then on to community-based programs such as language or, or what have you. But find find kind of get excited about education and and um, and so they they see themselves here. They persist and and kind of the successes are knowing that how some of those stories. I get to know some of the students. And, and such as yourself, and just knowing your daily kind of struggles and how you continue to persist, and I think, you know, that's success. And then the big, the big kind of marker of that is when um, students walk across the stage, and that's the best day, right? Whether it be our, our Aboriginal honoring ceremony um, or the, the actual formal convocation that happens for, for Vancouver Island University as a whole. And just seeing, you know, again, that you're, you know, how proud you are when, when you walked across um, and that your family was in the audience and, and your daughter and your partner. And we hear about, you know, your, your family, but then we get to meet them and you're, to see the students are, are, it's important for them to have their families meet the people. And, and I just think that to me is success that we became an extension of their community. And that's, so that's that micro that I, I love that part. And then again, you know, then when I see students, alumni out in community, and again, they, they're, they're eager to introduce you to their, you know, they may have gone on and had kids or, you know, got married or something, then they want to introduce you. And, I, and I, to me, that's, I don't know, it's like, it's, it's yeah, that we created community and, um, and then they speak highly of their experience at Vancouver Island University. And then the, the macro is kind of the, that systemic change, right, where I see, um, Faculty, for example, in some of those community-based deliveries that I talked about, faculty who go out and teach in in community, and their practice changes. Right? They they come back and say that you know that that it was truly a transformative experience for them because you know their their standard kind of um, way of teaching has always been within the institution, and to go out. Um, where students have a lot of authority and, and agency because that's that's their domain, right? And mm -hmm. and so the, the the instructor's the vulnerable one in that situation. And so um, and the, and if they're open to learning from those students, that they those students will so generously share and their own culture and their perspectives. And and again, I through that experience that that's that macro success as I see 
um, faculty coming back and saying, you know, one, I always tell the story of one faculty member in particular who had gone out to community, and, and I had asked her, I said, um, how has that experience changed the way you teach Indigenous students in your class? And she said, Sharon, it's changed the way I teach all my students in my class. And she said it, it because I've, one of the big things is she said, I've learned to listen from my heart. And that's that Indigenous value and principle, right? And I thought, so that's that macro success that, that only happens through that reciprocity. And, and so that's, that's what I get proud of with the work that we're doing here. You know, I thought about this, and I think that, it, and it was helpful for me to, to make the distinction to, and this is my own interpretation, uh, as education as being, in my own mind, I, I, I think of education as being kind of a, related to programs and structures, like, you know, the institutions, like education is something you kind of go to or attend. Um, so post-secondary education, right? That's, and so Indigenous education, I think, is you know, what we do in terms of the, the, the container that we're in is this institution, which is um, educational institution, which um, is inherently colonial. Um, and so it's helpful for me to be open and define that. And then the Indigenous pieces, we're bringing in the, you know, the work we do in Indigenous education is to decolonize that educational institution. And so um, that's helped for me. So the Indigenous piece is, is again, um, bringing in Indigenous ways and, uh, of knowing and being and perspectives and, and that history um, and, and recognizing the, the multitude of unique Indigenous, indigeneity, if you will, that students bring and that communities bring in those partnerships. And so that's, that's that kind of, so with Indigenous education, then you're, in, inherently it's a two world. It's always walking in two worlds. For me, it's it's walking in two worlds constantly. Like, how do I bring my own indigeneity, if you will, into the institution on a daily? And how do I support students? And how do I support community? How do I ensure elders continue to feel that they have a voice here? And so that's that's kind of how I define indigenous education, which is a different, right? Because I would think in our communities, we, we wouldn't call it indigenous education. We would call it our, we'd have a word for our teachings, right? And. Uh, so I think it's very, for me, Indigenous education is very particular to the work we do in kind of more formal programs and institutions. Well, we had this discussion last week with communities and, and around, um, you know, that again, that holistic application that, that um, is part of, you know, again, Indigenous value set um, and traditions. And so when I think of 10 years, it's, it's, it's kind of, you know, I always feel, and we talked about this as well, about that, that working within the box and trying to kind of make the box like more of a circle. Or, um, and I'd like, I'd like to see in ten years that we continue to have more of a holistic application that um, is recognized not only of having value for Indigenous learners but for all learners. I mean, I think Indigenous traditions and values uh, that people are waking up that that we have something to offer. You know that it's um, that our, our ways and, and and how we come to know through relationships and kinships um, through through the land through our language is is you know there's a stewardship there there's a there's a, a morality there and an ethical piece that everyone can can draw from and I think in in today people are hungry to um, kind of live from that principled place. Um, so I think that that's what I hope is that it's not in 10 years, it's not just about, I mean, of course, first and foremost, it's about creating equity for Indigenous learners. But it's but it's not just that kind of um, accommodation of it's it's no, there's value. There's there's something it's 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 given that respect that it deserves and it, as having a contribution to make across all disciplines and all sectors. So that's what I would hope for 10 Ten years. One of the things that that we're learning, you know, as of late, is again looking at that holistic application is um, to 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 make sure that in the for our, our work in the Office of Aboriginal Education Engagement is that um, we reach out um, and support work and collaborate with community organizations and schools for younger, like, the, you know, so the, the little ones, so that we, we work together to promote education. 
um, and possibilities and hope um, so that they start to see themselves here uh, or anywhere in post their journey for higher learning um, from a young age right so that we don't just start talking about it for a grade 10 and that we don't just start talking about it with students we start talking about it with their families and you know because I think a lot of families they're the students who come here they're first generation learners and so and sometimes they struggle to have that family support because their families don't know what it means to be a student and so how can we demystify and create a, a community for those families as well you know and the grandparents the partners and I think we're learning that that to do this work, we have to do that more, again, holistically than to just working with the one student or the community, but involving families. And so, yeah, I just I think that's a, a recent learning that I thought I would share.